do I know you? Madonna, I was wondering if you were going to do a parody of my song, Like a Virgin. I'm curious, is that song autobiographical? Yes, except for the fact that I've had a lot of sex. Welcome back to the Comic Book Bullies with Nurse New Bully. Me host Leroy, aka Slick Rick Jones, with my co-host. Uh, yeah, this is Eli, aka Booty Sweat. Pop an ass open. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we're back with the episode. We're trying to get back to normal. Like I said, we had the whole October extravaganza. Now this is normal. And Eli's got his question: Did daylight savings happen? It did. Okay. Remember that used to be like a big deal. Like we used to. Uh, worry about oh we gotta worry about it next week otherwise i'm gonna be either an hour early or an hour late for work or church or whatever you know now it's just like computers just do it you know? i don't i don't i don't mind the fall i hate the spring where we lose the hour i hate that that's true but you lose our game but the thing is what, what did we do did we lose the game i don't know what we did we, we we gained an hour we gained an hour i don't know if that's good or bad because now i feel like everything's fucked I walk outside, it's five o'clock, everything's pitch dark. I'm like, wait, what? 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 Because I didn't even realize that it was dark, uh, daylight saving time. Because, you know, computers and machines do everything for us now. Yeah. Your watch is dark, set, your it, clock is set. Yeah, it gets darker quicker. Yes, I will admit that. We lose daylight. Yeah. But, um, so I don't I don't know what happens. It's just done and then that's it. You know, meanwhile, you're, you're, you're waking up like I feel like I'm sleeping later than I normally do. Uh, when it gets late, you feel like it's time to go to sleep. Like, wait, so your body, your body noticed the difference, even though you yeah. don't notice the difference. You know, now I like this. Oh, damn! It's only whatever. Right. It's, it's oh yeah. Like normally, it would be one forty eight. We'd be starting, but no, it's only minutes. <laughs> no, but it feels like one forty eight for me. I can think that's what it is. Go <laughs> oh, like, damn! Why am I exhausted right now? I don't know. But anyway, uh, back to the episode. We're just gonna jump into it. So we got a lot of stuff to talk about. First thing I do want to talk about, ah, I didn't get a chance to do that, but that's okay. I'm going to address one thing, Eli. Of course, oh. next week, you know, Black Panther Wakanda Forever comes out. Is it already just, next week? Yeah, next week, yeah. Damn. This year is nope. just going by. No shit. <laughs> this isn't I COVID. Th I yet. thought it wasn't coming out for another week. You thought you had more time. No, it's okay. Yeah, man, damn. I'm, yeah, I'm, I, I don't know if I'm going to see it. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. I will be there to spoil everything for you. <laughs> so, but I do want to say this. Uh chill out with the spoilers now i'm not talking about to uh, our listeners or anybody else in it i'm talking about marvel stop that shit every time i turn around it's another goddamn trailer <laughs> spoiling more shit money putting more footage out there putting this stuff out there like stop chill i'm coming to see it you got my money you don't have to keep doing this stuff all you're doing is just making me because my brain is already going 100 miles an hour oh this guy's gonna do this this guy's gonna do that stop i want to go in fresh blind blank don't know what's gonna go on so um uh, and but and the thing is, like posting on the internet, that's fine. Okay, somebody posts this shit and they have their little blurb about oh Galactus gonna be in part two or some shit like that. Okay, that's cool. I can ignore that shit. My problem is when I'm watching regular ass TV and they keep throwing these trailers on there and you can't skip them. Like, <laughs> I'm just trying to watch the NBA games, man. I don't need this shit. You know, but uh, but the reason I also want to talk about it is because something happened doing the uh the whole thing while it was going on. Okay, I'm trying to see if I can find it. And I know I'm going to fuck this up. Let's see. Yep, got it. Okay, so Lapita. Lapita on, like, Good Morning America or Jimmy Fallon. I don't know. Jimmy Fallon. It says right in the back of it. Uh, She did this dance. Now, of course, it, if pe people didn't want paying attention, they just think, okay, she's just having fun, you know, doing a viral TikTok dance. But the thing is, the reason everybody went crazy, like, in Mississippi, because that dance originated in Mississippi. Matter of fact, in Jackson, Mississippi. So okay. she's doing the dance. She's doing it's called the Dear Silas Bounce, which had a better picture, but that's okay. 
uh she's doing the dear silent bounce from a rapper named dear silas and he's in jackson mississippi like when i mean jackson i mean he's in jackson like i could drive to his house right now he's you like, live next door to him <laughs> not not next door next door but jackson's so small like i would just bump into this he guy bagged your rapper. groceries once <laughs> <laughs> and he raps at nighttime now he's not there. <laughs> so it was just cool so when i saw that you know she did like a national dance a tiktok viral dance you know, from in Jackson, you know, I posted it and everybody went crazy. I was like, okay, so for anybody that posted it, they didn't get why that was so significant and why people have so many likes on my post. That's why. Because basically, you know, Lapita gave somebody national exposure that cool. she may or may not even know, you know. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So let me say we're going to move on to the next part. I saw a movie. Okay. I'm, I'm going to ask, did you see it? What did I see? Probably not. Was, okay. Yeah, that answered that question. The All Weird right. Al movie? No. The Weird Okay, I that's cool. I did not see the Weird Al movie. Okay, you didn't see the Weird Al movie. So I'm just talking about the Weird Al movie. The thing is, the Weird Al movie is out, and it's very interesting. I'm almost interested in seeing how did people watch it? Because, like I said, it's on... Oh, not there. Uh, It's on a very interesting streaming service called Roku. Yeah. I, got, I suppose I could watch, because I have a Roku TV. I don't. I don't have a Roku TV. Yeah. That's the weird thing about it. So I don't have a Roku TV. All I have is an Apple TV. But here's the thing. They, I, and, and that's the thing. Everybody has an interesting story on how they watch this movie. Because everybody, because it's not like Netflix or Hulu. Like you just got an app like Roku. Who the fuck got a Roku app? You know, nobody, nobody watches Roku. Even if you have a Roku TV, the only time you watch Roku is when you accidentally hit, yeah. you know, hit the remote. You know. Yeah, it does have a Roku channel that I could watch and has live. It's yeah, it's got a bunch of like streaming shows and like every other free app, you know, uh, Tubi, you know, it's like another one of those Tubi, right. Crackle, a bunch of probably the same shit that's on Tubi and Crackle is on the Roku, channel. right? And, and for the most yeah. part, people ignore it, like it's there, but you ignore it. So when people said Roku, like they're gonna be printing a Roku, you're like, what? Well, how do I watch that? But here's the thing. I didn't download a Roku app or anything like that. I was just, honestly, I forgot about this movie and I got an email from Roku because I forgot I signed in with my parents' account, you know. So they just sent me, you know, uh, Weird Al Yankovic is out. And I'm thinking like, well, how do I watch it? And they gave me a link. I'm like, just click this. That's it. No subscription or nothing. Just click this. I'm like, yeah. let me click that. Just see, just see what happens. So I clicked it and it popped up on my phone. I was like, oh, I can just watch it on my phone? Like from the, from the web browser? I'm like, okay. <laughs> So since I have an iPhone and have an Apple TV, I cast it, you know, just did a little cast thing, airplay, whatever like that. Shout out to the TV. I'm like, huh, hey, it played. Okay. So just watched it. So it's free on, on Roku right now. Oh, you okay. don't have to have a sign in, no subscription, nothing like that. You just watch it. You do but have to have the internet. <laughs> you do have to have the internet. Like That's the only thing you got to pay for. And I think that's right. what it is. It's like, <laughs> as long as you got the internet, you have access to all this shit. You know. Right, as long as you don't live in Amish country, you should be. You should have yeah. the internet by now. Yeah. You know, uh, sadly, Eli, there are places in Mississippi that don't have it. <laughs> oh, I hate yeah. to bring that up, but yeah, yeah, there's some dead spots around here too. <laughs> okay, oh, so I thought it was just in the south. Like, how do you, how the fuck you survive in 2022 without internet? How you know? Like, I understand you can, you don't have to be addicted to it, but like, like you needed to like work, you know, do things. Normal yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. Yeah, to so. make phone calls. <laughs> yeah. Well, not to make phone calls. That's too cellular, but still. <laughs> FaceTime. FaceTime, you need yeah. that. So. Uh, but yes, things like that. So so that's the interesting thing about that. So people have different ways of watching it. Uh, people can't watch it overseas, and people are asking, where are Al on Twitter? How can I watch this if I can't? Roku isn't in my country. And he actually said, bootleg it. Like, he just said the shit <laughs> on Twitter. So that's that's Weird Al for you. Uh, I think I should give a disclaimer about who Weird Al is because there's, there's a lot of people that don't know who Weird Al is. Weird Al is actually one of the best-selling artists in on Billboard in history. He's a a, a comedian, a musical mm -hmm. comedian. He makes parody songs. He makes parody songs. That's pretty much how he got famous. Uh, mm -hmm. pe people, most people I knew him from, you know, parodying Michael Jackson. You know, Eat yeah. It, but he, he was actually doing the shit way before then. Like he was in the seventies yeah. doing the shit. Yeah, you know. Dr. Did Demento, there was that one show, radio, Dr. Demento or whatever, mm -hmm. I guess. Dr. Demento's um, in the movie, like he, he's his mentor, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, every every decade he reinvents himself. Like I said, in the 70s, he was just doing just the accordion shit. 80s, he basically got popular because of MTV. That's basically what it is. Like MTV yeah. needed that visual looks. So that's why Michael Jackson popped off because his, his videos, he changed the game with videos. So Michael Jackson took off Madonna, 
anybody that had popular videos took off. So what Weird Al and Yankee was doing, I don't know was he pairing the songs, but these popular, super popular videos, he was pairing them also. Like like he he would just he just redid the beat it you know video. Yeah, and it or was fat funny. or bad. Or fat. He did, yeah, he did yeah. bad, but it was fat. I'm fat. Right, and he and he did say every video he did, he did ask permission. You know, or even sometimes the artist would come to him and ask him, "Could you do a song for him?" Which the movie actually <laughs> talks about. It is, you know, uh, like like Madonna. Like I just briefly talk about that. It didn't happen in the movie, but Madonna asked him to do, "Can you parody one of my songs like a surgeon?" Like you know, a like surgeon. a virgin. Make, yeah, like a, yeah, yeah. So he like, okay, since she wants me to do it, I'll do it. You know. <laughs> Is so this thing I'm trying to, I was like, I'm sorry, I'm on, I'm trying to do something else. Now, okay. is the movie good? Is it? I mean, I've heard it's a mixed bag. Okay, I'm gonna I'm just off the rip, I'm gonna just tell you this whether or not you can watch it. Now, and I figured I... it's because either if you know who Weird Al is, you probably mm -hmm. like it, if you don't, you probably won't. that's pretty much it. Because I will tell you this before I get into it, this is the most Weird Al experience there is. This is just snorting Weird Al. So if you're in the Weird Al, you're there. Uh, if you're not, I, I can see why you could be like, mm, no, nah, it's not my thing. It's pretty much, uh, let me see if I can pull this up. Do, 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 do. I'm sorry. I'm off my A game right now. Uh, Eli, do you remember this movie? UHF. Oh yes. Okay. It's very much that it, it, I'm not saying it's anything. It's like a, a spiritual sequel, like spiritually. Like you or like, feel, and that yeah. was kind of like an extension of Al TV. Remember, he would take over MTV for like an hour, and right? He'd have like his own Al TV show, mm -hmm. and it was just a stupid variety show of him being goofy, him doing mock interviews and stuff. And um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like that. Not saying it's exactly like that, but it just you just feel it by like you feel UHF, you feel like that, and UHF like a movie he wrote and directed like back in the 80s, yeah, like and that. Started, like his, yeah, I remember liking it. Because I was stoned when I watch it, and then I watched. That's it again. the best way to watch that. Movie. Yeah, and then yeah. I watched it again when I wasn't stoned. I'm like, this isn't that funny. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, you got to be in the right frame of mind to get it. So, like I said, I'm gonna just give you my opinion all through before I actually dig into it. Eli, what I think about this movie, I honestly think it's the funniest movie this year. Oh no, shit! I'll even take it a step further because you know I love my hyperbole that always gets me <laughs> that bites me in the ass later on. I'm going to say it's the funniest movie of this decade. Wow. Yeah. We're only two years in. So, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. No, no. I know you're thinking I about, suppose. oh, yeah. No, we're not talking about American Pie and no shit like that. You know? <laughs> we're talking about this decade. We're talking about the last two years. I'm, trying, I'm sitting here thinking, was there a funny movie I've seen? Now, some people are saying uh, the Jackass movies. I haven't seen the Jackass movies. Oh, I'm actually not really a Jackass that, fan. You know? There were two of them. Two of them came yeah. out this year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The like, there's no more. Yeah. There isn't much comedy. And that's why I'm about to say, because the comedy genre is basically dead. Yeah. Because you can't really do comedy because you keep pissing off people. Oh, yeah, you get you're gonna, you're gonna offend people. you're gonna offend people. You're gonna offend yeah. somebody. So yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. So I'm trying to think because in my opinion, I was thinking like the comedy genre is dead, they're not gonna do comedies anymore, and people don't really do comedies. And sometimes even when they do comedies, they don't be funny. Yeah, shit, like yo. I, I tried watching that blockbuster show on Netflix. I, I hadn't even I started, but I yo. think I laughed like twice and I watched like multiple episodes of like yeah, well, for one thing, that show starts. It it, it takes place like now. I thought it was going to be like a retro, like in the eighties like or nineties, eighties or nineties yeah. or something. No, it's like now, and like, yeah, I was like, this is. But you know, the only reason I'm watching is because uh, what's her face, Santiago from Brooklyn Nine Nine is on it. And yeah, see, I <laughs> see, I was a, I was a Rosa fan. That's just me. Oh yeah, yeah, Rosa's cool too. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> See, we like we like Team Edward, Team Jacob. Yeah, nine, nine, <laughs> nine one fans had the fan. Team Santiago, Team Rosa. Who are you? you know. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that's my thing. Um, yeah. So let me just dig into the movie. Like I said, uh, I was laughing my ass off the whole time of this movie. I do want to understand where people where this is coming from. Like I said, is is set up like a, a weird Al biopic, but the thing is, it's not really a biopic. Ninety percent of this shit is made up. Okay. What he's doing is doing a parody of biopics. So kind of oh. like Walk Hard and what's that Andy Samberg movie? Uh, Don't Stop Stopping. Keep keep Stopping. You know, the Lonely Island movie. That movie. I didn't see that one. Okay, I didn't see it either, but I'm hearing it's like that. So it's like that where it's like, but you're taking Weird Al and you're putting him in any situation where he pretty much, you know, 
mimicking or parodying stuff you see in other biopic movies. Like it reminds me of that that Elvis movie or Bohemian Rhapsody. You can see scenes taken from that, and they like okay. parodying those movies like that. But it is like going through his life because there are stuff that happens in this movie that did happen to him in real life. For instance, like uh, when he recorded his demo, he did record his demo in the men's bathroom. He did get started in music by a traveling accordion salesman. He said all that shit happened. So, so you think this shit is ridiculous, but then you like you're like, no, no, that happened. You know. Yeah. Uh, and the thing is, how this movie even got made in the first place. Okay, remember, I don't have it. Fuck it. Okay, remember Machete. Oh, Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo. Okay, nothing to do with Machete, but Machete was made because it was a fake trailer in the Grindhouse movie. Yeah, yeah. Same, same thing with this Weird Al movie. So back in 2010, uh, Funny or Die, Funny or Die did a Weird Al skit. You know what they we just we gonna make a biopic of Weird Al, but they were playing it straight it was by Aaron Paul from a uh, Breaking Bad. Yeah. So they played it straight and they just put Weird Al there. We just <laughs> He's act banging like a, Madonna. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so they were playing it straight. And here's the thing. <laughs> so the director of that skit of uh, Red, whatever, Funny or Die directed this movie okay because the thing is because the skit was so popular running it ready to die well, i'm sorry i think about 50 cent ready funny or die, die. <laughs> that every get time rich or die no. right get rich or die trying starring weird al yankovich you know <laughs> i uh, died by that for <laughs> <laughs> that's the next movie the next 15 years that's that's the sequel okay <laughs> okay so we're every time we're al did a show the skit was so popular, people were asking him, when are you going to do the movie? When are you going to do the movie? And he, like, he had no, he wouldn't even think about doing the movie. He was like, but after 10 years, he was like, you know what, fuck it, let's just do the movie. You know, so Funny or Die actually produced this movie. Okay. Uh, and like I said, everything you see in that trailer, like him banging Madonna, happens in the movie. You know? <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's a lot of stuff that goes on in this movie. Uh, it pretty much plays out. Because the thing is, one thing that we all, all of your favorite artists, everybody listen to this, your favorite artists, they all have one thing in common. They're all fucked up. They either, you know, drugs, alcohol, you know, sex addicts, you know, gambling. There's always some crazy shit going on with all your favorite because we love tortured artists because the more fucked up they are, the better entertainment they make. Yeah, you know? the best art is, art is made by fucked up people. <laughs> right. And, and that's on the good side. Those and are the normal ones. Yes. And that's why I say keep them busy. Right, Let them make their art, or else they're gonna go nuts and do some other <laughs> fucked up shit. Right, you know? keep them busy. Let them make their shit. <laughs> right, because we like it when they make entertainment. We don't like it too much when they open their mouth. You know, yeah. we just like them to just keep it. Yeah, like keep it busy. But the thing is about Weird Al is that Weird Al doesn't do all that shit. Like in real life, he doesn't drink, he doesn't smoke, he doesn't even curse in real life. Yeah. Lizzo's album, he doesn't do any of that stuff. You know. Uh, he's a Christian, goes to church. He just makes, you know, he's married with kids and shit like that. He's just a normal, he's actually literally a normal dude. So it's hard to make a biopic of somebody that's not fucked up. So what they do is in the movie, make him fucked up. You know, <laughs> all the shit you expect him to do, like women, drugs, you know, uh, fame getting to his head, you know, getting in trouble with police because of controversial shows, like all that shit happens, you know, in this movie. And it's funny because it's out of control, you know. Uh, there are stuff like you know, Doctor Doctor Demento is in the movie. He did get into because that's that's real. He did Doctor Demento is a real dude, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and there's parody scenes in it where he takes him like to this beach party, which they actually said he stole from uh, Boogie Nights, you know. <laughs> and in the background of it, it's like all these '80s celebrities like Pee Wee Herman and stuff like that. And a lot of celebrities like they don't even name. They're just in the background. Like Gallagher is just back there chilling. Gall You're like Gallagher. Fuck? Yeah, Gallagher's Holy just back shit. there. Just, they don't even <laughs> name him. He just like if you if you get the joke, it's there. Yeah, if you yeah, don't yeah, find, yeah. you know. So I'm like, what the fuck going on here? You know. Oh, uh, trying to think what else happened in this movie. Uh. I got to talk about Madonna. Let me see if I can talk about Madonna. I don't have the pick. Anyway, so like I said, Mad I thought Madonna was going to be a, a cameo. Madonna is the main villain of the movie. <laughs> because if they like said this, this movie is written by Weird Al Yankovic. So it's almost like a wish fulfillment power fantasy that he wish he would. It's almost like if you wrote your biopic, you know, the story of Eli starring Jason Momoa. You know, that's <laughs> that's basically what this is, you know, because <laughs> it's funny. Like you look at Daniel Reckler, like Daniel Reckler got ripped for this movie. Like they say he trained with Chris Hemsworth. 
you okay. know, and he, half of the movie, his shirt is off. So I think that's part of the joke also, because we never thought about, you know, uh, Weird Al is a sex symbol, you know, a sex symbol rock guy, which is what he is in this movie. So it's part of the joke that it's all his wish fulfillment. So I'm like, OK, that's that's all part of the joke. Uh, Hold on. What we got here? And Dude. Vic, Dude. Vic, what's going on? Yeah. And so and that's that's part of the fun also, because uh daniel radcliffe i gotta talk about daniel radcliffe like i said i haven't watched all the harry potter movies like i've seen one harry potter movie he kills it in this movie because the thing is the reason he kills it because he's really he's playing like a heightened version of weird Al. like he doesn't look like weird Al, but he's playing like a heightened cranked up to 11 version of weird Al, like a real Al from an alternate reality but he's playing it like serious sometimes he playing it funny sometimes he playing it serious and funny sometimes he like goes all out for this movie like he goes way harder than he should have for a Roku movie, you know? So and that's the thing, because like I said, this is a literally a three minute skit turned into a 90 minute movie. And we've seen all those Saturday Night Live movies that turned in, you know, most of the time they don't work. This works because of how how hard Daniel Radcliffe goes in this movie, how, how he makes it. Is yeah, it every Oscar joke. worthy? Can it be, can it win an Oscar? <laughs> I, I thought about that like could this win an Oscar? Com- <laughs> but you know, comedies don't win Oscars anyway, you know, like <laughs> and, and plus on Roku. So I thought yeah, like he put he gave a, a funny performance. Like I didn't think the guy was that funny, you know, or or serious, but he he landed. Like I apparently that's all he does now is weird ass roles like this. That's yeah. kind of why weird out pick, you know. Uh the chick that plays Madonna, what Revan H. Woods kills it. She's also oh. playing like a heightened, cranked up to eleven version of Madonna. She looked like Madonna. It's like if Harley Quinn played Madonna. I want to I want to spoil some shit for you for I, I got to tell you what happens I got to tell you spoilers spoilers anybody want to watch whatever because I got to spoil because the, the third act just goes fucking bananas like I said remember how I was saying it, it reminds me of UHF the yeah. third act just turns into UHF because what happens okay so Madonna because we're out of like some say like some sex symbol rock god that just anytime he pairs somebody's song their music triples like in the movie that's what happens so Madonna mm-hmm. wants to fuck him just so she can so he can parry her music so she can get you know sell more records you know so that's not the reason she's banging them pablo escobar wants rid al yankovic to uh <laughs> yeah pablo escobar's in the movie he wants him to perform for his birthday party you know and we're having told him to fuck off so what he does he kidnaps madonna you know and sends a hit squad at the weird al yankovic which he kills everybody you know in a diner <laughs> so he goes to columbia goes on a, a killing spree kills everybody uh including pablo escobar and then madonna takes over the drug lo- drug cartel he goes back to the Grammy and since she says he knows too much, she sends a hitman assassin after him that kills him at the Grammys. So he's assassinated in 1985 and it has a rest in peace. Uh, Will Al Yankovic. That's how the movie ends. Until you see the after credit scenes and Madonna goes to his grave and puts a flower down and his hand reaches out of the grave like the ending of Carrie. I'm like, I'm like chef's kiss, chef's kiss. <laughs> I hate to spoil it for you, but I had to tell somebody about this. <laughs> so it is like weird shit just happens to the movie all the time. Like that, like the movie starts off like, okay, is this shit kind of real? And then towards the end, he's like, okay, yeah, none, he just made all this shit up. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah so because UHF, he was like Rambo. And he was like Rambo. That, it reminded me of that scene. It was like when he went <laughs> Rambo and just went crazy, shit like that, you know? Because uh, he had to rescue Crane in that movie or some shit like that. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm like, yeah, this is insane. So that's what I'm saying. I'm going to rate the movie uh i'm gonna give it a strong 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 four out of five reason i'm gonna say four out of five because like i said it's it's weird out yankovic and humor is subjective so if you don't get weird out Yankovic, you've not never been into his stuff you might not like you you might you know when he starts going to columbia and killing people you may be like oh, i'm out i can't deal with this. what oh my god oh <laughs> right fuck him. like you don't oh, like it fuck off <laughs> right but if you're into this weird shit and you know where weird al is coming from and you're a fan of his music it's that it's like so, his music so you're yeah. saying you condone killing people and <laughs> fucking, uh, 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 uh. oh eli the thing pieces are already coming out <laughs> people are already pissed off because madonna is the villain of the movie <laughs> oh why has the woman got to be played as a villainous succubus like that like man, chill out man he even asked madonna permission before he even made the movie you know <laughs> That's so weird out. I can't believe the patriarchy <laughs> allows this to happen. Right. <laughs> and plus, 90% of the movie is made up. Don't take it so seriously. Like, shit. Sounds great. I think I am. A- yeah, just watch. I, I'm, I'm mad I spoiled it for you because honestly, when this shit happened, I'm like, what the fuck is happening? But I was loving it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but other weird shit happens too. So, yeah, go from there. So, 
I think we can move on. Uh, what is it? I think it's still on me. I think it's still on me. You know what? No, it is on me, but I'm gonna put it on you. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, let's see what we got. We're gonna talk about that. Oh, you got mm -hmm. something to say? Okay. No, I don't have anything to say about this. Oh, no, you said it was on me, but on you. Yeah, because I was going to pick another topic, but I saw that topic. I was like, you know what? I want to hear about this topic first before I get to my topic. Okay. Yeah. All right. It has been announced that there will be a Friday the 13th prequel TV series coming to Peacock um, by Brian Fuller. I guess he's the guy who made the Lecter, Hannibal, the Hannibal Lecter TV show, we which I've never watched. Um Okay. What was that on HBO, NBC? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I, I never I watched. Heard, it. I heard it was good. Yeah, I, yeah, I've never been a fan of Silence of the Lambs. I, th I thought Silence of the Lambs is. Eh. But wasn't yeah, that's just, just kind of like? But wasn't that show just like a procedural drama that pretty much it was ripping off uh, uh, Dexter? Sure. I don't know. I guess it was I, I, a. That's what I heard. I think. I think. I yeah. guess it was a prequel to. I don't actually. I don't know. I've never watched it, mm -hmm. so I don't know. Um. But they're making it's going to be called Crystal Lake. It's a prequel series to the original Friday the 13th franchise. Now, it's interesting what's been happening. Friday the 13th has been under, there's been a court battle over the rights for like years. For decades. Yeah. yeah. Um, this also put, a, you know, a, 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 you know, it made the, the video game. Remember, we had the video of the game that came out. It stopped them from making more content and DLC content. Um, from you know or even making a sequel game is the game know. even still online still it's still out there okay, but they, right. they they weren't allowed to like develop it any further um because of the the court battle that's going on um and so because the guy who wrote the original script you know he wanted his rights back he so basically and that's what happened the judge awarded him his rights to what's in the original script. Now, the original script is just the first Friday the 13th movie. And as if you, for those who don't know, the first Friday the 13th movie, it is Jason's mom who is doing the killing. So he has the rights as to everything in that movie. But Sean Cunningham, the, the director, the producer, he owns the rights to everything that comes next, like adult Jason, the hockey mask, and all that stuff. But from what I'm reading, is that's film rights this is tv so everything's up in the air oh, yeah, everything's a loophole you know. yes but this is going to be a prequel series so we're gonna focus on the his mom pamela okay. Voorhees. um and for those who don't know the the origin of friday the 13th it's yes uh it, 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 it camp crystal lake um, little boy named Jason, he had disabilities, he was deformed, bullied kid, drowned in the lake. The camp counselors were ignoring them because they were, you know, Drugs, banging, sex, they were partying yeah. and bawling. Which I always said the movie was a cautionary tale. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know. that, that's pretty much what it was. Um, mm. So she goes nuts and starts killing the camp counselors. 20 years later, they try to open up the camp again. People start dying and it's her mom, it's, or it's Jason's mom doing the killing for revenge because she went insane and wanted revenge on the camp counselors. Um, and then, of course, part two comes back and it's Jason. Jason is like, takes the series over. And, and he's got like his mother's head and. Yes, yes. He, uh, well, you, in the you know, first movie. You know movie, how I know that? The video From game? the game? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the first movie, yes. Uh, the, the final girl, Alice, cuts off. Um, Pam, his mom's head and rumor has it he saw that's the legend he's he that jason actually did survive the drowning but he was like you know living in the woods all those years and then saw his mom get his head cut off her head cut off and then he's been going around you know taking revenge on the you know okay so then say he was like a spirit of vengeance or some shit and then or... he eventually becomes that okay so and and i'll get into that later but um they're making a prequel to the movie, the original movie, which means we're going to focus on his mom. We're going to focus on probably Jason as a child. Um, and I don't know if I'm, if that, if I'm, a, I'm not really into that idea because Jason movies are just slasher movies. They're straight up right. 
You go. You watch. You don't want to get into psychosis. Yes, you know. Of... You, I don't care. I don't. Don't turn this into a, a boring drama about domestic violence and a kid with special needs gets bullied. I'm not interested in seeing that. <laughs> I just want to watch. You know, everything is a think piece nowadays. Again. Yes, like let's just you know, and 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 I've seen and I've seen this. You know, people say, "Oh, Jason's boring." Jason, there's no substance. There's no plot to Friday the Thirteenth movies. Yes, there isn't. It's a simple formula. The, that the keeps exploitation movies. Right? Yes, yes, you can call it murder porn or whatever you want. It's just mm. it was just a way to see you know, grisly, gory kills. It's what yes, it's what cemented the slasher genre you can talk about how halloween launched the slasher genre well friday the 13th ripped off halloween and then only put gore and blood in it because halloween the original halloween there's no blood there's no gore right in that original halloween they said let's do halloween only yeah. we're gonna show Cause, cause halloween john Carpenter was trying to make a real movie yeah he was yeah. it halloween's a masterpiece in terror mm -hmm. it's all about tension and suspense and it's it's flawless Friday the 13th ripped off that, you know, let's let's have a psycho killer, you know, hacking up teenagers. Only we're going to show the killings. We're going to show the gore and the blood and the guts. You know, Tom Savini perfected his craft, you know, the, the, the effects master. I mean, they were still, like, developing how to make, you know, the, the, the gore effects, you know, mm -hmm. um, on those movies. He, you could see the evolution in all those movies. You can see the evolution of him you know, perfecting his special effects, uh, makeup effects. Um, and that's basically what became the slasher genre, a psycho killer, killing teens in very bloody, gory ways. And that's what, that's what the slasher became for the first half of the 80s. Um, and Friday the 13th was pretty much the, you know, the blueprint. Yes, mm -hmm. Halloween set the stage, Friday the 13th, you know, made the blueprint this is what it is this is the stereotype and that's so friday the 13th never was never meant to have a mythology you can tell if you watch those movies they are mm -hmm. making shit up as they're going along like okay are you saying he one, was supposed to go to space or anything like that and come a cyborg no okay. <laughs> yeah the, oh yeah eventually he's gonna go to yeah they didn't ever stop the first one was his movie until yeah, i got the uh, nice marble snap oh you missed it Vic. we talked about that last week yeah oh. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, they, the first movie had his mom. The second one, like, oh, it made a bunch of money. Well, let's make another one. Well, we killed, we killed his mom. We killed the killer in the first movie. So let's bring him back, you know. And they brought him back. He didn't have the hockey mask in part two. He had a pillow sack, like a bag like on a, his head or something like that. Yeah, yeah, he was like a you know a, a psycho hobo living in a shack in the woods and shit, crazy right. redneck, you know. And then that made money, so they brought him back. And then they, he had the hockey mask. And then the hockey mask, yeah, the hockey mask didn't become a trademark until part three. You know, and that's, you know, where he became the icon that he was, is they were making shit up as they went along. Part four was supposed to be the last one where they kill him. That made a bunch of money. They brought him back. They kept bringing him back because these movies kept making money. And um, and they it stuck to a simple formula. Yes, you can argue that, oh, yeah, Jason's boring. Friday the 13th movies don't have any plot. There's no character development. There's no depth, blah, 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 blah. And you would be right. It's got a simple formula. Jason killing teenagers in bloody, creative ways. That's all it is. And that's why the fans love it. You know, you, yeah, it might, he might be a one-trick pony. There might, be a lot, there might be not a lot of plot or character dramatic weight to any of these movies. But I guarantee you, if you released a Jason movie tomorrow that just had put Jason in the woods killing up, you know, hot teenagers, asses will be in those seats. Because it's a simple formula. They never fucked with it. They never tried to, you know, you know, get and they don't have to spend a whole lot of money on it and yeah, make his money yeah, back. You know, Boom. yes, yes. Freddie does all you know, Freddie movies are fun and all creative and innovative because there's dream sequences. Chucky gets innovative, and then of course, Scream is like a, a teeny bopper soap opera, and and they have all these, you know, um, each has its own identity. Yeah, Jason only has this one thing he does, and it's just to be a slasher. You know, to the point where other movies start ripping him off. Yeah, Michael Myers was basically becoming Jason, right? And <laughs> in, in this new Halloween, Leatherface in that last in that last Texas Chainsaw was just was just Jason. You know, and uh, but that's the that's the appeal to the friends of Friday the Thirteenth is that's that's why they like it. Is he is just a it's a simple formula that works. 
We don't care about the characters. We care about Jason because in the end, Jason is the hero. You know, to Friday the 13th fans, Jason is the hero. He is the tragic character. He is a kid, a bullied kid with special needs, with disabilities, out for revenge on the assholes who neglected him. It's the ultimate revenge of the nerd, the revenge of the outcast. You can tack on all the morality tale and, you know, yes, if you have premarital sex and you do drugs and something bad going to happen and other cautionary, you know, morality shit. But in, fans just like Jason because he's kind of the anti-hero of, of the series. He's just getting revenge on rich, spoiled kids who don't invite him, to, who are throwing parties in his backyard and not even inviting him. <laughs> <laughs> right. Not even offering a sip or a hit off the blunt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that that's why, you know. And so in, with that being said, I'm not interested in seeing his mom get beat up by his dad. <laughs> Right, but let me ask you this. You say you're not interested, but are you going to watch it? I probably will, yeah. I got <laughs> okay. Peacock. I, it'll give me some. Hey, it'll give me something to bitch about. <laughs> you have become what you hate. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, it's nothing I want. I'm, I'm, like I, I've said this before when I went on the Halloween rant. I'm sick of this elevated horror shit. I'm sick mm -hmm. of making horror all bummed out and 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 this emotional like depressing dramas about shitty characters and just shitty people being shitty to each other mm. you know and that's what this seems like it's gonna be you know we're gonna see this woman lose her child go insane because that's what she's doing in the first movie she's like talking to herself mm. you know kill her mommy kill you know she's fucking nuts you know do i want to see an old lady go nuts and you know basically Taxi driver with the woman. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do. I kind of want to see that. <laughs> I mean, sure, there, there's some ways like, OK, there was like 20 years. There's a 20 year span between the original when Jason died and the first movie. So mm -hmm. if you make a movie or a series or I mean, do I want to see that, though? In a series? OK, but here's the thing. I'm, I'm 20 bring up years of point. her like being a serial killer for I don't know. Yeah, well, here, I'm going to bring up the point. Let's talk about the first sla movie slash. Okay. Norm Norman Bates. Okay. Yeah. So they made the Bates Motel uh, TV show. That show was awesome. Like it really was. That. Like it. Oh, it was awesome. <laughs> Go watch that show. That show was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but like I said, that sounded it was, like a Dexter or something. It it probably was. Dexter was so popular. You had so many ripoffs around the time, and it was around that time also. So I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if it was. But yeah, uh, awesome show. So like I said, if that if this Peacock show can live up to Bates Motel, you know, I feel like it'd be pretty interesting. You never know. You never know. I mean, but yeah. do I want that with Jason? You know, right? Like I said, Jason is just—he's got a simple formula. Just stick but to you that. Don't, you don't know what you want until you get it. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. So. you know, it could. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it could be cool. And I yeah. will eat a whatever a cheeseburger. What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> right. If I like this show, I'll eat a cheeseburger or whatever. <laughs> right. Come on, Eli. You know everything's woke nowadays. You know everything that they make, they're going to think three steps ahead about what they're doing with it. Yeah. So they'll, they'll just, it yeah. yeah. I just, I just want a new movie. I just give mm -hmm. me a new movie of, like I said, put Jason in the woods, hacking up teens. You, you'll that that that'll make that'll bust the box office. Yeah, we, we don't. We can't do that anymore. This is 2022. You know, Jason I, has to look into a skull of the person he killed. What is a man? You know yeah, all this shit that, like that. It's got to be introspective. No, you don't. Terrifier too has just proven we don't need that. <laughs> you don't need it, but that's what you're gonna get. <laughs> we don't want that shit. We just saw a clown. Eat it, eat it God damn it. <laughs> yeah, we just saw a clown just basically hack people and do and play with their body parts for two and a half hours. Yeah. <laughs> And it's submitting itself for the Oscars. So there <laughs> <Yeah>. you go. <laughs> for you know, your consideration. Yeah, we don't need the elevated fucking woke shit. We just want to see blood and guts. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Goddamn liberals. Okay. So. <laughs> All right, what do we got? Uh, okay, so let's talk about this. Speaking of woke shit, <laughs> let's talk about Wonder Man. Because oh, we okay. love talking about, we're the only podcast that ever talks about Wonder Man. We was on Wonder <laughs> Man before anybody was on Wonder Man. Not everybody is on Wonder Man. Yeah. But we were the first. Wonder, we were the Man? That's yeah. Wonder Woman's husband? <laughs> <laughs> right. So, yeah, so we decided to do this. So we talked about Wonder Man. Uh, shit, I, I don't have it in front of me right now, but it's cool. Oh, there it is. Yeah, okay. So, like I said, Abdul, yeah, I'm not going to say Yeah, yeah. That Yaya. guy. Yeah, yeah. You know Yaya. the guy. Okay. So, <laughs> Yaya has been cast as Wonder Man. 
the same guy that said last month that uh superhero work is clown work you know but hey <laughs> clowns get paid too is <laughs> so, so yeah so he's put on another bozo outfit like i said he's been black manta he's been dr manhattan now he's gonna be wonder man you know maybe so. he read that issue where you know wanda gives him a blowjob really i get a blowjob from scarlet witch hell yeah i'll play that role oh that's not gonna happen they count that <laughs> shit <laughs> Can you imagine that shit? A black dude banging Wanda on it? Oh, like, and then oh, no, hating we... it like, no! <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, you mean like, <laughs> no! we want this scene. We want this scene and we write. <laughs> Blow job of death. <laughs> do it, Disney. Do it, you cowards. Okay. But that's what I want to bring up because we got to address the elephant in the room. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. But that's what a man looks like in the comics. So. We gotta bring this up now. I know we don't like to bitch about this. I know we we're supposed to be progressive. You know, we're not supposed to be the other YouTube channel. But I got. I'm gonna bitch about it, Eli. I'm gonna bitch about it. <laughs> I'm tired of having our good black actors playing these crappy D-list white superheroes. I'm tired of that <laughs> because they could be actually playing good superheroes. We can have blue oh, Marvel. Yeah, like, we- like yeah, like a native play keeps on playing the underground or underwater hero that nobody gives a shit about right yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like that like they can actually be playing black heroes you know that's the thing they try now they're trying to shove wonder man in our face like we know we don't want wonder man we're not claiming wonder man you know i'm not i'm not like uh these girls watching you know little mermaid looking at wonder man and you're oh he looks like me i don't give a fuck i don't want wonder man <laughs> yeah because wonder man's kind of a doofus right and that's the thing because they know that they leave uh wonder man a white dude nobody's gonna give a shit because nobody never gave a shit about Wonder Man. So you might as well just make them black. So, so you're going to just shove them off to us? You know. So then when it flops, now they can blame it on us. Well, black people didn't support it. What the fuck we got to do with Wonder Man? What the fuck we going to support Wonder Man for? And so, what's so. Wonder Man going to be in? Like, is he, he going to like be in an Ant-Man 4? Like... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's getting his own show. It's, it's going to be a show. Oh, it's going to be a show. It's going to be a show. He's getting his a Disney Plus series. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's, yeah. And that actually would make me even more pissed off. He was like a sidekick in ant-man for some shit like what no so he's well, it's, like Kang. it's the same thing with kang like why is kang being Fighting in an ant-man. ant-man movie like what right the fuck because it's, it's paul Rudd. you gotta you gotta build up paul Rudd. i guess i don't know. yeah they make kang black and then put him in an ant-man <laughs> right like why <laughs> yeah so i don't know uh but that's all i want to talk about because like i said it's it's not so i'm gonna bitch about it maybe the show will be good I don't know. But if it's bad, <laughs> you just wasted an actor just doing just bullshit. You know, because now he can't be in the MCU doing anything else. He, he probably, he like, fuck the MCU anyway. But that's what I want to talk about. You asked about Wanda. Because like I said, me and Gomer got in an argument about this. I kept telling him Wanda is supposed to be like Wonder Man's soulmate or some shit. Because in the comics, they completely ignore this shit. But in the comics, Vision's brain is a copy of Wonder Man's. So when she fell in love with Vision and shit like that, then she got to know Wonder Man. She's like, oh, Wonder Man acts just like Vision. So I was in love with a robot version of this dude. So why don't just be with the real thing? You know, why, why, you know. Ah, fucking Wanda. Why bang a sex doll, I, I, you know. I, I can't stand Wanda. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so powerful, man. It's, but you love Riverdale. Wow. <laughs> right. <laughs> Nobody's yes. fucking robot version of people. <laughs> Although yeah. if they did, I yeah. would. <laughs> One more season to go. <laughs> One more season to go. But that's the thing. Yeah, so it's a whole love triangle between Wonder Man, Vision, and Wanda. And because Vision and Wonder Man come from the same brain, they call each other brothers and shit, you know. And they fought over Wanda, like, like m- many times. You know, Vision, like, you know, stay away from my wife. And Wonder Man, like, fuck you. I'm going to fuck your wife. You know, they fight each other and shit like that. Wanda, like, no boys don't fight over me you know so yeah so man it is why he signed in here so he can like bang it the 90s Wanda or Wanda Wonder Wonder <laughs> Wanda man <laughs> Wanda and Wonder <laughs> that was power like, couple yeah, because like I my first uh like the only the one I was familiar is when he was in like the green suit or whatever oh that's some like, Stan Lee 60 shit yeah he was like in that green he looked like a fucking um uh, and he had the W on his chest. Or yeah, something? yeah, he looked like Cyborg a little bit. He looked kind of like old old school Cyborg. He is in that green. He looked like a cosmonaut or whatever. Yeah, that's that's some old school shit. Though. That's yeah. like what I was like. Who's this guy? Is <laughs> <laughs> so, but I want to see what they do with Wonder Man. Like I said, because I'm the only Wonder Man fan on the planet. I guess. Oh, you're a Wonder Man fan. 
I guess I'm a Wonder Man fan. I, like I said, I I seem to know more about Wonder Man than anybody else on the planet. So I guess I'm the I'm the leading expert on Wonder Man. Well, he is like a pivotal member of the team. Like, right, but the Avengers sucked then when he was on the team. Yeah. So that's why they. So when they got rid of Wonder Man, we're like, no, get it, get it, get Spider Man, get Wolverine in here, get Luke Cage, get yeah. the sexy, cool superheroes in here. You know. Yeah, like, uh, cause like. I, yeah, I, when all these Avengers movies were coming out, I was like, "Where the fuck is Wonder Man at?" Like, right, you know, and that's the thing. Like, they want to look like, no, let's let's pretend like that era didn't exist. No, <laughs> no Mockingbird, no Wonder Man. You know, no, no, those people. So yeah. So I don't know, but now Wonder Man is here. But yeah. Um, well, can he play a good douchebag? What Wonder Man's not really a, what, okay. So Wonder Man was actually a villain when he first showed up. So, but he's not really a douchebag. Not really. He's kind of he's kind of a nice guy, you know. Oh, like not a douche, but I was like like a dingbat. <laughs> he is that. He is kind of dumb. Yeah, <laughs> I guess so, I, yeah, that's what I yeah. meant. Because <laughs> like I said, I, the movie I guess because he was like a Hollywood stuntman, something like that. So I guess we see like a go. jock, like a dumb jock. So yeah. then I then that I equated that with douchebag. So I guess yeah. <laughs> and I'm I'm pretty sure yeah yeah can play that. So yeah, I mean, he was in a Baywatch movie. So yeah, what? <laughs> just play that well, role. Yeah. Well, yeah. Aquaman. And- yeah, you know, so he was in that. Doctor so. Manhattan and shit. <laughs> right, so yeah, I mean, it's clown work. He can do it. So shit, he doesn't work that hard. <laughs> do this in between his real movies, you know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, I guess it's still OB. We're gonna stick with that. We're gonna go to move to the video game section. Just briefly talk about this. Uh, I didn't play it because I have no way of playing it. But apparently, this week, God of War uh, Ragnarok comes out. So okay, uh, they did put a trailer out. Oh no, not that. <laughs> <laughs> dancing yeah, that no. that's a trailer okay so the trailer put out was ben stiller uh john travolta and lebron james with their kids and that's the trailer oh. the in therapy talking about how their kids and how they relate to kratos i get it i actually thought that's pretty clever that what they're doing they're selling the uh the game to dads they realize we're oh. old as fuck we want to play this shit we're gonna sit down and play oh we're gonna play and well, my son is my sidekick yeah so they, they know who they're selling the game to so that's pretty clever uh selling point of the game i think you kill thor in the game so mm. I, i've seen some some leaks on there like a month ago where you fight like thor is one of the boss fights so yeah oh no shit yeah so i can't play it because i don't have a ps5 can't find a ps5 i actually stopped looking for a ps5 at the while i'm playing the original god of war well the ps4 god of war on pc right now fun as hell so i think i'll beat that first before i start you know searching for ps5s you know, plus if a PS5 is that hard to find, maybe I don't need to find one anyway. So, yeah. Which is weird because I hear, like, they're losing all, like, the PS network is, like, losing all these subscribers and all this shit. Well, that's the thing. Because here's the thing. The PS5 is one of the best-selling consoles of all time. But that's because it's being sold to scalpers and bots. So nobody actually owns one. So, yeah, yeah you're selling the systems. But since nobody owns one, you can't sell the games. And you can't sell the uh, PSN because nobody owns it. So, yeah, they're losing money that way. So until they actually can, people can get their hands on the system without, you know, going through bootleggers and scalpers, they're going to lose money. So they need to figure something out. Yeah. Meanwhile, yeah, I've yeah. never seen one yet. I've still never seen one. Meanwhile, you can go online on any site, Walmart, Best Buy, stuff like that, and buy an Xbox Series X right now. Yeah, I, I do have one. one of those. <laughs> yeah, but nobody wants one, you know. <laughs> so like you can play xbox i don't want that shit (laughs) it's fine for what i do (laughs) right (laughs) so but yeah but next year i gotta get one because like i said i do want to play god of war red rock spider-man's gonna come out wolverine got a game coming out next week it's all ps5 exclusive so i kind of gotta get one by the end so but until they until it's a bunch of games i gotta get i'm I'm good i'm cool right now or i could wait till next year until we may maybe drop this god of war game on pc maybe So if I do that, I don't need a PS5. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that being said, can move on to the next part of the podcast. Sure. I think we hit all the points. Okay, like I said, it's comic book bullies, but we're talking about comic books. And Eli, you got more books than me, so I'm going to let you go first. Because honestly, really? this was, yeah, I think this was like the fifth week. So it was a, it was one of those shit weeks. I couldn't find anything. Well, yeah, I, I read I, stuff, but yeah. I'm And I was like fucking. I had I had to dig in the crates for this one. So I was like, I, I, was, I don't know. And I was like, uh. I'm like, yeah, money's tight nowadays. I can, I, I can afford two, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> and that's about two it. books a week. <laughs> <laughs> well, All Star, since it's a, it's Indigenous Heritage Month, 
or should I say Indigenous Creatures Month? <laughs> yeah, where did that? That's how you and Fat T talking about that. Where, where did that thing? Come oh, from? um, I think it was ABC or one some news news uh stage some news story. Good Morning America or something, ABC News or something was had a segment on uh, indigenous shows and indigenous her- and they had this thing on Indigenous Heritage Month and they're talking about how indigenous movies and TV shows are kind of happening right now with reservation dogs and you know um, Rutherford Falls, Rutherford and- Falls and all that stuff. And the the the, <laughs> the anchor said indigenous. I think I think she was she meant to say creators. Mm-hmm. A, a bunch of indigenous creators are making stuff or whatever, and she said indigenous creatures on the air. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, <laughs> on the anniversary, this is the one year anniversary of something else. So, <laughs> so if you remember last year, right, right, when, it's they, during the election, and they were breaking down the voting populations by race. They had Caucasian, Black, Hispanic, Asian, and on the bottom they said something else. And now let, talking, let me ask you this: They're the, talking the about new, Arizona too, right? The news site that did that was it Fox News or was it CNN? It was, I think, CNN or something. It wasn't See, Fox News. So, so the liberal yeah. <laughs> side did it. Okay, the progressive <laughs> side did it. Okay, they said yeah, something else. You know, um, <laughs> referring to Native American, <laughs> right? <laughs> something else. So of course, uh, you know, natives ran with it, and there was all these something else memes um, going around during that time. You know. <laughs> poking fun at everything and same thing now this weekend it's we, we've been a ton of indigenous creatures memes have been popping up on uh native twitter and all that stuff. yeah i saw you popping up because because fancy had like a bunch of indigenous creatures i like they look like a god of war game man where, where this shit come from? <laughs> yeah indigenous creatures so um so because this yeah indigenous heritage month i'll do this werewolf by night one shot um, written by native horror author Owl Going Back. I've actually read one of his books, um, okay. one of his monster books, and he—that's what he does. He writes these horror stories that incorporate native history and culture and heritage um, in the novels and stuff. And he got to write this uh, Werewolf by Night one shot for the Marvel Voices online it's not it, it didn't go to shelves it didn't go to shops it was like an online exclusive on the website only because i couldn't even find it you're the one who found it for me right so <laughs> shout out for that <laughs> <laughs> um but this is a one-shot werewolf by night story featuring jake gomez the new native kid who's got the werewolf by night who turns into werewolf <clears throat> um that was written by taboo so this is just a one shot of him fighting a Wendigo. Um, it's just a pretty, uh, a pretty, uh, you know, standard story. Where, uh, let's see, I got an image. Yeah, it's a pretty, uh, you know, standard. You know, he he's, uh, you know, he there's a monster in the woods. He. Uh, turns into werewolf and fights the Wendigo. Now this is the Wendigo, the real native Wendigo. Not the Okay, fluffy... so it didn't look like oh, okay. Yeah, not the fluffy teddy bear. So where is it? What wrong one? There. So Wendigo. There's... Yeah. This is the real native, you know, because the Wendigo is a monster from native mythology. A bunch of tribes, usually up where I'm from here in the northern, you know, Great Lakes area. It's a it's a monster like a like a cannibalistic monster that eats people, um, wears their skins, <laughs> kind yeah. of like a leather yeah. face, um, and yeah. So the werewolf fights him, and then you know kills him and shit. It's pretty standard one shot, and it was like to coincide with Halloween and the Werewolf by Night TV show on Disney. So uh, yeah, so it was pretty cool, um, you know uh like not, not this simple you know monster battle story uh written by a native author who's like i said written a bunch of horror novels um so yeah i i i figured i just you know highlight it because it is an indigenous i think maybe i'll try and do that every month or every week this month i'll yeah, try and you... find a, a, a native hero or a native something to talk about 
I was going to actually do that, but I didn't want to impose anything like that. Yeah, well, it's hard because there's not many, or and even less than I would want to talk about. <laughs> right. This like, week, Red Wolf. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I ain't doing no Warpath. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Warpath in his Mardi Gras superhero outfit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, this was this was pretty cool. Just a simple, you know, fun monster creature feature, you know, monster battle, you know. Werewolf versus Wendigo. So cool. Four out of five. It was hard to find, of course. Yeah. I had to like search it. You had to find you found it for me. Um, I, I and I have the Marvel app. I have Marvel Unlimited, and I still couldn't find it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you gotta know what like I said. I think if you looked on the website, you can't find it. But if you look in the app, it's like the Marvel yeah. app is it, it need it needs some work. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. I finally found it under the what was it called? Marvel. Marvel now infinity or comics infinity or? yeah it was under the infinity yeah. online because it's, it's online only it's not yeah. for printing it's all a bunch of online and it's a ton comics. of just online only Marvel books like this on there right now so yeah. yeah I think hell I think Jonathan Hickman got like an X Men book like just on on that app that's it yeah that actually like ties into the other X Men shit yeah so was, I I believe this was a native artist who did the art for it and it's just just and it's kind of weird too like the way it's meant to scroll. They're not broke, you know, like on like Comicsology, how it like pays. Right. Its well, pages. see, on Comicsology, you can actually choose to scroll or that. So you actually do. Either okay. Way. Yeah, because yeah. this is just it. Just you just scroll. It's like and you know, and that's why I phone. don't like reading them. That's why I don't like reading them because you got to do that scroll. <laughs> I don't like that shit. You know. Yeah. They, they try to design them for phones, basically. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it was yeah, so it was a little weird. Like, where does the page start? And where's okay? I'm just going panel by panel, basically. You know, right. and they are just like meant to be like one panel per screen or whatever yeah because cause they, they want you to read them on your phone yeah. yeah so but you know as a simple you know basic monster story for halloween it was pretty cool you know mm -hmm. written by a native art writer drawn by a native artist with a native the new native character um he's i right. jake gomez is i right. as far as like the native you know a native american superhero in the marvel comics written by taboo you know, he was, I believe, Hopi <laughs> on the res and Hopi in the Hopi reservation. And he's got like the curse of the werewolf or whatever that, whatever that you know, the, the werewolf by night curse. He's got it. His, you know, um, and he uses that power to protect the reservation. You know, in that first story arc, he, uh, um, the government was like the secret government society was kidnapping native kids and then turning them into mutant monsters, mm -hmm. you know. And he uh, went to the laboratory and freed them all and had to fight mutant monsters, you know. So it was all right, you know. I think that I, because I, 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 re I reviewed that book, you know, those comics on the show last year or whenever it was. I think it could have used like a, a an issue or two because they kind of rushed in the end. You know, they rushed it towards the end. Well, that's you know? what Marvel is doing now. They they put out five issues or like that. Look at the sales. And yeah. then if it don't do what it want to do, it's done, you know. Yeah. And move on. Yeah. So um, but yeah, so pretty cool. I'll give it a four out of five. Cool, cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, like I said, a bunch of Batman shit did drop this week. Yeah. I only um, got one. <laughs> you only got only got one. I'm not reading all that. I'm not gonna be Batman out. Just because <laughs> Batman, we'll wear you out if you let him. Right, let me guess who this is. is uh that hello, Lake, but yo, let me see. See, I can't tell on here. But I can tell on the app. I bet you it is, Jake. Let's see. Jake, I'm going to just pretend like it is, Jake. Jake, what up? <laughs> Does Jake say hella? That could be Fat T, too. <laughs> no, 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 because Fat T is hella late. No, but yo, I, I'm going to say this, Jake. But I'm, while I'm doing it, I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look it up and see. Because I can tell on the app. Uh, Okay, so like I said, I did read a Batman book. It is Jake. <laughs> it is Jake. So I'm on it. Okay, yeah. Jake, what up? <laughs> what up? I don't know why I keep doing it. It's like a glitch with any time you do it, Jake. I don't know why it is that like that. But yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, so this is another. So I'm gonna do the the main Batman book, like the regular Batman book, and Eli, Chip I'm gonna let you do Chip, the Chip Zdarsky. Chip Zdarsky, yeah, this is that. So yeah, it's continue with that whole Batman failsafe story. Where I heard what happened. I didn't read it, but I heard what happened. I mean, I don't think anything like earth shattering happened in this book, but okay. <laughs> I heard what had happened like, at the end. <laughs> oh, like this. Oh, I mean, I guess there was like a shocking ending yeah. at the end, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, where's the thing? Window. Nope. Anyway. All right. So I'm just keep, hold on. Let me see what we got while we figure this thing out. 
Uh, Batman's the only hero that matter of comics, to be honest. <laughs> they did. De DC definitely thinks that. So they, yeah, the ones that sell. <laughs> You're right. I mean, there's like just just crank out Batman. I'm, I'm pretty sure that keeps the lights on. At DC. Yeah, I think one week they dropped. It was like nothing but Batman. It was like nothing but Batman stuff. You know. Yeah. Well, this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. So basically, what we are spell safe is the uh, basically like Batman's prep time personified, like a robot version of Batman that just knows nothing but prep time. Uh, soulless, just a machine, and that's what you know. No human side of him. So basically, like Batman versus himself. You know. Or like a, a AI version of himself. That's basically what this whole thing is. And there we go. It didn't act, when it went act right at first. Okay. So basically, Failsafe has turned Gotham into a police state. He's ran Again. Batman out. He kicked the shit out of the Justice League. It's They're all out of there. all over again. <laughs> oh, shit. Damn. That, see, I would kind of like it, but not just you saying that <laughs> makes me like, want to say, fuck this book. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's basically Future State all over again. So anarchy like in Gotham again, <laughs> right? But it's actually no, yeah, it is anarchy. Yeah, people just more going through the streets, shoot down people. Batman's are like, yeah, it's Joe Chills every day now because uh, he's just letting shit run wild. So basically, failsafe actually has a failsafe in his system where he can't kill anybody, so, but he didn't have to save you either. So he's just letting Gotham just run rampant, and he's seeing people get you know, uh, stabbed and robbed shit like that. He's not doing anything to save him. Matter of fact, he's basically causing so much chaos in the city that he's, his crime has just gone up, you know. And he's doing it, and he's basically tearing Gotham apart on purpose. The yeah. reason he's tearing Gotham apart is because he knows it will draw Batman out. Because he knows it's the only thing Batman loves. Oh, is you he know? still hiding in Wonder or Wonderland? Oh, no, he's in uh, Atlantis. He's in Atlantis right now. Yeah, yeah. I was underwater. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's underwater. Yeah, he knew Bat uh, Aquaman was going to rescue him. So he's basically, <laughs> Aquaman has, you know, satellite. He's got direct TV down there. He's watching the news and shit like that in Atlantis. Everything's getting fucked up. Aquaman's like, okay. Because Aquaman wasn't there when, when Failsafe fucked up Just League. So he's like, who is this guy, Batman? And, and, and be honest with me. He was like, uh, and Batman was just was like straight up with it. He was like, look, I created this guy a long time ago. Uh, I didn't know he was crazy. And basically, he was designed to stop me if I got in control. And the reason you haven't seen this guy before is because anytime, like, Failsafe accidentally activated himself, Alfred was dead to shut him down. Alfred knew the Failsafe to shut him down. But Alfred's not here anymore. So that's why he's just running rampant right now, you know. So he's – and eventually, he's going to put two and two aww, together. Oh, just cute. What happened? Uh, author got – author said – Oh, yeah, I was wondering about that. Okay, did Batman bring that? Or did Arthur have it waiting for him? Or... Yeah, that, that's kind of cute in a romantic way. I was thinking about you, Batman, just in case. <laughs> Guess what? I, I still have your stuff from the last time you were here. <laughs> Batman knows the Wi-Fi password, all this shit like that. <laughs> oh, shit. But anyway, he suits up, ready to go, stuff like that. And basically, he's just telling them, like, uh, eventually, fails, if, if Failsafe thinks like you, he's eventually going to put two and two together and know that you're down here. You know, especially since I didn't come up there and fight him. So you're like, yeah, that's right. So Batman's, basically, Batman is putting a plan together himself. Meanwhile, fail, Failsafe has captured all the Bat family, all the Robins. Batgirl is basically, like, hooked up to a machine where she, like, monitors everything. And he's basically running scenarios on how Batman could beat him. And he's making the Oracle do this shit for him. He's like, okay, what if Batman travels in time? We well, won't do that because he don't want to cause a flashpoint. Okay. What if he goes into outer space and bring an alien army here to stop me? You're like, eh, it might. Maybe he'll finish that Omega armor he used to fight Dark Side. You're like, nah, I ain't not gonna do that. You know. Uh, and then Nightwing and them is basically like, oh, he's coming for you. He's gonna kick your ass. And Fels are like, no, he's not. He's not coming here. You know why he's not coming here? Because he knows I can't kill, and he knows I won't kill you. He knows I will fuck you up, but I won't kill you. And he's fine with that because you're his soldiers. The <laughs> only thing Batman cares about is the city. That's what's going to draw him out, not you. So, like I said, he's saying he thinks like Batman. We're hoping Batman doesn't think like that because he said that in front of Batman one time. Batman freaked out. He's like, no, don't you ever call my sons, you know, soldiers and shit like that or collateral damage, you know. Um Basically, run a scenario of all the metahumans that basically all the Justice League members, like all the Justice League members he haven't seen yet. 
And most of them kicked their ass already, but there's one he hasn't kicked the ass of yet. He hasn't kicked Aquaman's ass. So so if he hasn't seen Aquaman, obviously, that's what he said. This is getting even better. I, I swear, <laughs> this is a lot better if I think of Aquaman and Batman as fucking lovers. Like BFFs at love. <laughs> <laughs> See, now you're thinking of Batman and Robin type shit. <laughs> like they're both in turtlenecks down in, in Atlanta. <laughs> He said, because he said before, yo, Aquaman will save me. And he jumped off the plane. <laughs> and he did. He grabbed and he him. he did. <laughs> <laughs> and I will always love. He's at his man's house right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, you see, now that you said it, wait till you get to this part. <laughs> so <laughs> if you think Aquaman was a little Batman before, wait till you see this part. So basically, Aquaman is telling the, the, the kingdom of Atlantis. He's telling the whole his army, look. This guy is coming for Batman. You protect Batman with your life. And basically, like, one of the soldiers is like, wait, why are you doing all this shit for a human? Like, for a, for a robot he has a beef with. Just throw his ass to this robot and be done with him. He's a fucking human. And that's when Aquaman gets in his face. He was like, "Do you? how many times have you saved the planet? He was like, oh, uh, what? He was like, because if you ask Batman that question, you'll be sitting there for a while while he tallies up the answer. Your re only reason you breathe in this water right now is because of Batman. So you better defend my man. <laughs> <You know? laughs> he doesn't say my man, man there, but yeah. that's my man. That's my, my man. <laughs> Not the Batman, my Batman. <laughs> my Batman. <laughs> you protect my Batman. <laughs> so he's basically underwater, basically swimming, and he realized that his, my I think his fish are telling him something. He like uh, shit's not right. So he goes with the fish, and he sees a breach. And boom, failsafe is this. Failsafe was there waiting for him the whole time, you know. Oh, so he basically takes Aquaman out like nothing. Takes Aquaman oxid, uh, takes Aquaman hostage. He was like, Where is he? He like, tell me where Batman is right now, or I kill your king right now, you know. And they waste no time telling him he's in the throne room right now, watch the TV, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so they're like, Oh fuck, well, let's go, you know. So failsafe goes there and they just take him to there. And guess what? Batman is already gone. There's a Justice League Watchtower teleporter in there, so he teleported to the Watchtower. You know, and he was like, so he's at the Watchtower right now, and basically he's putting it together a plan. He like he knows that Failsafe is going to figure out where he's at right now, so he's putting together a plan. He already sees a, a bat, his his bat plane because Failsafe has all his shit. So he tells the like the, he basically programs like the Watchtower uh just League cannons to shoot him down and shit like that. They shoot it down. Failsafe you know, still hits the ground. He's like, I'm coming for you, Bruce. You can't hide from me. I can't stop. I won't, I won't breathe. I won't, you know, scan in the room for me, shit like that. Uh, Batman's like, okay. So he got, he has a gun that I guess he stole from the new gods or some shit or whatever like that. So he knows this gun will fuck him up. So he's scanning for him, looking for him, shit like that. Bam, blasts him, but it only like shot like his outer shell, but it was enough that it actually like exposed him for a second. So you're like, that's all I needed. You know, I, I need to know what his weakness is so they get into a fight and shit like that of course if, if you know fail safe strong to take out just league members of course batman is no no match for him so he's trying to get out of there he basically tells the justice league, uh the watchtower to like shut down and shit you know uh he shoots himself outside don't worry he's got like a little air breathe on his mask so he's fine so he can breathe in outer space it's not like marvel where the moon you can breathe on the moon dc isn't like that but he's got to breathe it so he's in another part of it uh, while he's running, Phil Save just says, fuck that, just bust through walls, shit like that, still coming for him. And he traps himself in, he thinks, another teleporter. But actually what he's doing is destroying the watchtower. He destroyed the watchtower while he's safe in there. And I think either Phil Save knew he was doing that or he teleported Phil Save. I think, I think Phil Save teleported himself out of there and went to the, uh, to the Hall of Justice. So he's back on Earth now. Wow, the Watchtower is just completely screwed up. It's, it's gone. The Watchtower's gone. And Batman's like, okay, Watchtower, uh, give me a, give me a, not a Quinjet. What do they call this shit? Javelin? A plane. Javelin. <laughs> give me, yeah. Uh, I, I get my, I get my shit confused. He's like, give me a Javelin. He's like, Javelin is an opera. Well, give me another, give me all the Javelins. They're all an opera. So he fucked the Watchtower up so bad, he can't call a plane to go save him. While he's floating in space with no teleporters, yeah. and that's the end. So that's Batman, the that's the panel I saw. So that's the panel you saw. Here. So yeah. Batman in space, space, space. <laughs> yeah. So that's the book. Oh, get me out of here. So that's the book right now. So that last panel is pretty cool. Batman floating in space and shit like that. So yeah. 
Uh, what do we got? So pale simple like robot Iron Man, kind of like Ultron, basically. Kind of, and it's yeah. all, it's it's it, it's guess, Frankenstein's monsters, basically. Think basically, it. yeah, it's like yeah. Batman is his. It's his mistrust. It's yeah. his, you know, in in in, in the Justice League is why he yeah. created this thing, and now it's sort of his past coming back to haunt him or something like that. Right. It is yeah. basically. It's Batman without the humanity and just yeah. nothing but calculation, mind, prep time. It's basically that. Yeah. You know, that's that's basically what it is, you know. Um, but overall, I'm like, honestly, Failsafe is a cool villain. He's a cool villain. I think he is a worthy uh, ad- addition to the Batman's Rose Gallery, which honestly, I think without question, is the best Rose Gallery in comics. Mm-hmm. I think Failsafe need to be in that conversation. Also, like, yeah, though. Oh, fail safe in it. So we get like a bunch of Batman fighting a whole bunch of Batman. Yeah, fail safe show up again. He's a fun villain. So yeah. So uh what, what you got? Um you rate it five out of five. I'm gonna say four point five out of five. Because it did kind of kind of kind of slow at the beginning of it, but towards the end, Batman is space fighting the terminator version of him. I like okay, this shit, this shit getting pretty good, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I skipped out on it this month because um, I'm a little tight for cash right now, and mm-hmm. I bought this instead. Yeah, and, this and I a black didn't label buy this because I was assuming <laughs> you would buy this. So, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm only buying one Batman book this week, and it's going to be this one because I've yeah. actually been waiting for this. I you have. Heard, you've, been, you've been talking about this, yeah. Yeah, I actually saw this like a few years ago. Yeah, um, damn, I, okay. Yeah, um, Mark Silvestri. Um. Creator. Tell them who Mark Silvestri is. Yeah, Just one, case. Of the, one of the one Im- of the the OG Image uh, crew. Um, mm-hmm. Did a, my my favorite version of drew my favorite versions of Wolverine. <laughs> yeah, because he started X Men first, and then yeah. went to the Image. Yeah. Uh, then went to Image. Did Cyber Force, The Darkness, Witchblade, classic literature. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> masterpieces of art and human anatomy (laughs) (laughs) yeah um and then i found out oh he's gonna be doing a batman book so i i saw this he posted this like on his instagram like a couple years ago and i was like no shit he's gonna do a batman book that's gonna be dope um of course pandemic and all that shit probably got delayed um Mm -hmm. and so now it got released mark silvestri doing the art on this is Batman and the Joker, the deadly duo. So basically, this is uh, some weird versions of the Joker, some Joker zombies or something, are going around killing people um, in Gotham. Wait, wait, um, before you start, did he write this? I don't think he... He might have, like, co-wrote it. Okay. All right. um, but he does all, he's doing all the art, you know, all, like the pencils and inks. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh basically yeah there's batman's finding these murders and they're you know and they're they're um people are being like you know torn apart and shit and um ev- evidence lead like the, uh, an ex-cop was killed and he he busted off some rounds uh doing some de- he's detecting you see batman do a little do a little detective work and he's like okay ballistics show that the bullet holes have like white paint on them and green hair, which leads, oh, this has got to be the Joker. But the Joker could not have survived, you know, a straight up gunshot wound to the head. And then he starts trying to track this, whoever this is down. And then he finds this guy, looks like it's the Joker, but he's, uh, you know, running and jumping off buildings and landing off of high rises and shit. And he's holding a guy's head. He's running around with a head. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and um, basically, it turns out that uh, um, the Joker ends up finding Batman. Basically, um, uh, they find. Oh yeah, I forgot the the seven moment. So he gets a uh, Batman gets a a box, and it's got a piece something from Gordon, <laughs> a body part of Gordon. It's just a bloody piece of something. It's, oh it's, man, really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like okay, we have Gordon. This is him. This is a piece of him. And uh, if you want him back, blah, 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 blah. And then the and the, jo- the real Joker shows up as a, hey, Bats. Um, yeah, I know you think I'm the one doing this shit. It ain't me. So we better team up, you know, 
and uh, you know, instead of the you know the dynamic duo, Batman and Robin, it's Batman and Joker, the deadly duo. Let's go. He, I want to clear my name, and I need your help to go do this. So that's kind of where it ends. And then at the the last panel, I don't have it, but the last panel is like a bunch of those zombie monster Joker guys are like on the roof. So, so there's a bunch of these guys with Joker DNA, but they're like indestructible and they're like monsters. They kind of look like Mumra from the Thundercats. Okay. They have like, like yeah, the, that, the mummy wraps on them and stuff. And yeah, he has uh, he has like he's got a smile, but like he's got fangs and shit and those big red eyes and shit. So it was pretty cool. I actually thought it was cool. The art, of course, I'm a Mark Silvestri fan, so the art is awesome. And it's just a a, a good old fashioned Batman story, you know? Um my favorite kind of standalone Batman stories. Yeah. Where he's not in space <laughs> fighting mm-hmm. robots. <laughs> not to say that's not good. I just didn't get to read it. But I, uh, this was cool. I actually dug, dug on it a lot. Just a standalone, straight up Batman story. You know. And uh, very violent, bloody, brutal. It's black label. No bat dick, of course. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> They're not doing that anymore. <laughs> yeah. But uh, this was cool. I, I actually dug on this a lot and lived up to the hype in my book. So it's a four out of five for me. Cool. Okay. All right. Uh, last book I got. Sorry. That, that's how like this week has been. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to do, where is it? I'm going to do Black Panther number 11. Okay. So we're going to keep this going. Uh, like I said, John Ridley or David Ridley? I can't remember what his name is. John Ridley. John Ridley. Okay. He's still he's still on the book. People are divided on him. Some people make him, you know, miss coats, but I'm gonna just go <laughs> with it, see what we have. Uh, this is like the first part of a new story arc. So yeah, if you haven't read any of the Black Panther books, you just go in fresh and you're good. So we're just gonna start off with that. So let's go. <clears throat> so basically going on. Uh the book starts off with a heist. Well, not even a heist, let's back it up a little bit because basically we're getting like a briefing. Right now, he's telling me what's the sit rate, what's going on. So something has happened. And apparently they're telling a story about how 95% of the Internet all comes from three places. Reno, Wales, and Osaka. Like all over the world. Like 95. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if that's real or not. They For story purposes, that's what's going on right now. And they say they're all uh, taken care of in a, basically in a warehouse. Yeah, that's the servers. Yeah, the servers are basically in, yeah. Oh, that's real? Okay. Yeah, yeah. The internet is basically a bunch of servers. <laughs> okay. What? Okay. I didn't know that was real. I thought I just made this up for Marvel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know my history. Anyway, um, so what happened is the internet gets hijacked by ninjas. Cool. And they each, yeah. And they hit each one of those warehouses. So both was Osaka, Wales, and Reno all at the same time. And since they said, since this is just like a big ass warehouse and they barely have barely any security. They just take everybody out. But the thing is, they don't kill anybody. They just escort them out. They're like, just leave. And this is going to take over the place. So then they put up this energy barrier where nobody can get in. So they have control over, these these ninjas have control over the world's internet. But here's the thing. They don't do anything about it. They're like, we control the internet and we're not going to do anything about it. And all over the world, they put up the same symbol, uh, sign. They just say, live freely, but live in peace or else. So basically they're saying they're holding the world hostage for world peace. As long as you just live in peace, don't start wars, don't do anything fucked up, we won't fuck up the internet. That's all I'm saying. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But meanwhile, some people are pissed off. And who is pissed off? Joe Biden. (laughs) Oh, kingpin. (laughs) Let's let's go, Brandon. (laughs) All right. So he's pissed off because these guys have control of the internet. And basically his, you know, his uh, people are telling him, Look, all they want is world peace. Like, no, fuck that. They they don't control the internet. We control the internet. So I want you to send our guys in right now and take back the internet. And when I mean take back the internet, I mean just just Las Vegas and Reno. <laughs> fuck everybody else. I don't care about them. You're like, but but why don't we just let them go? Fuck that. This is election year. <laughs> I want something big to happen. So Pornhub yes, is good. still free, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> They're gonna charge. <laughs> so yeah so that's going on right now so joe biden is basically telling the uh he's sending an army to go to reno to take back the internet uh he sent a whole team out there and they already spotted before they even come out there so they shoot the planes with emps they don't kill anybody they just drop the planes 
and you just tell them to just leave. Just get out of here. We're not going to kill you. We just don't want you around here. So that's going on. But because of what he did, because he told them don't come for us, they shut down the internet in Wisconsin. Oh, shit. Yeah. So he's like, okay, since my, my regular army can't do it, he calls the Avengers to go take care of it. And he basically saying, okay, so the child is still running the Avengers. He's the chairman. He's still fucked up from uh fighting the the Buffalo Soldier. Yeah, because he got because he got shot last time. Oh yeah. Yeah. So he's still recovering from that. So basically, they asking T'Challa, "Well, what should we do?" And T'Challa's just like, "What do you mean? What should we do? What? Why should we do anything? They're not doing anything. They're just sitting there. They're not. They didn't kill anybody. And they're not fucking up the internet. They're just not doing anything." He was like, "No, we can't do that because if they because they're terrorists. Like, how are they terrorists? Who are they terrorizing?" Are you just mad because they have control of something that you used to have control of? You just want to just maintain the status quo? You're like, T'Challa, and Tab, like, look, I don't care about all this shit, T'Challa. Are we going in or not? And he just puts his head out. He's like, okay, yeah, fine. Go ahead. So they're like, cool. But the T'Challa can't go because, like you said, he's still recovering. So you got Thor, Captain Marvel, and Captain America. They all hit up those three spots individually. You know, they were like, we're going to take them out because it's, it's just some ninjas. We can take out some ninjas by ourselves, you know. But, of course, they can't. These ninjas are prepared for them. They already know everything they can do, and they beat each individual one. They beat Thor. Because Batman they... showed them how. Exactly. <laughs> Batman showed them how prep time. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they were already ready for them. So even the Avengers can't get them. So, but they don't kill them. They don't take them hostage. They just send them on the way. They're like, just leave. You know, and we won't fuck up the internet. So, so now, and Joe Biden's like, ah, oh, fuck. You know, <laughs> so that they whooped the Avengers ass. I go, can I call the Justice League? Can I call Invincible? Who, who I got? You know, uh, so he's just like, they're going to pay for what they did. And it's not like they didn't do anything. You don't want to attack them. And so they just defended themselves. So he's just like, look, I don't, I got time for all this shit, T'Challa. Are you on their side or you on our side? He's like, I don't care wh- what side they own. They're not doing anything. So we just leave them alone. You know, so then I think uh, because he's like, all they want is world peace. You just mad because you don't have power. Like you used to have, like you know, it ain't no fun when the rabbit have a gun. You know that old saying, you know. So you know they just wax poetic back and forth, big political session like that. But when T'Challa gets along with Shuri, basically tells her, "Yeah, sure, I'm kind of on their side." <laughs> so I get it. They're trying to give power to the people, and they're trying to take it away from the government. I mean, I understand it because I used to be the government, so I understand what the fuck is going on right now. So he's like, and then he talks uh, about how uh, how he got kicked out of Wakanda, how he's no longer king, and he doesn't feel like the same person anymore. So Shuri cheers him up by taking him back to Wakanda, but not like the the royal city, like the the common side of Wakanda, like the regular people side of Wakanda. And he basically telling you, like T'Challa, this is the future. If you don't get your shit together, Wakanda is going to leave you behind. So yes, you can't leave Wakanda anymore. But how about you learn how to serve Wakanda? You like, and you're like, huh? I never thought about that, you know. But then that's when he gets a, an alert because Shuri had like hacked into it. She was like, just in case she found a back door to find out who is controlling the internet. She was like, I think I know. So basically, whoever's contacting him with the internet is using a Wakanda transmission, and he already noticed they're using Wakanda technology to hold down the four of us. So he was like, okay, these people might be Wakandan. So, and basically, the the message is saying to Chala, come alone. Nobody else, just come here. He was like, okay, and don't tell anybody you're coming. So he goes to, I think, Reno. I think he goes to Reno. He flies there by himself. They let him in. You know, he walks in the guards, and the guards see him, and they just walk, they, uh, walk this way. So he's got to go to the leader. Now, he thinks the leader is the prime minister of Wakanda because he hasn't seen the prime minister of Wakanda in, in, in weeks. But it's actually not her. It's Jai. Now, if you don't remember who Jai is, Jai is, that, is the guy in the first issue they got killed. Oh, yeah, okay. He faked his death. Oh. Yeah, and he's using Wakandan soldiers and spies and shit like that, like the war dogs, to carry out. But he think he's doing work for Wakanda. He think he's taking over the internet for Wakanda. You know, he think, so that's what he's doing. So he's like a rogue agent from Wakanda, and he's doing all this for Wakanda, and he thinks he's doing it for T'Challa. And to be continued. So, yeah. So everything has been a lie. That's the story. Uh, it's a better arc than the last arc. I put it like that. <laughs> it's it an interesting it idea. It's an interesting idea. I see what they're going with it because they're trying to see who's the villain here. Because and I and I get it. I, I see a lot of people saying that like superheroes, all they do is just protect the status quo. 
Like, and it, are they the good guys? And if the status quo is bad, are they are they really heroes or villains? You know. Yeah. So um, it's it's I, I, that's where the story I think is trying to trying to go. Cool. So, so uh, yeah. So what you got? Uh, I guess I'll do Predator. Predator, Predator. number four. Okay. Um, Marvel's Predator. Marvel has the <laughs> <You> rest. Gotta, <laughs> yeah, you got to definitely say that in asterisk here. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, this is the new Predator. Marvel's Predator. Um comic that they've doing take uh you know dark horse no longer has the rights um and this has a uh this woman who her family was killed by a predator they were like um trying to terraform this planet her whole village was killed her pants were killed by a predator she was the sole survivor she was a little kid she ends up growing up learning the predator technology learning how to fight the predator learning how to use their weapons and they're hunting grounds like where their territories are where they hunt the mapping systems all that shit she's been doing this for the past 20 years and she's trying to find the three mandible ter- uh predator that killed her family the, you know the you know the mandibles the the, the claws in his face mm-hmm. he's missing one you know and the predator's face it opens up like a crab or whatever it has all these mandibles the predator that killed her family is missing one so she's looking for the three pronged predator <laughs> um and so this you know this is issue four in the story arc she was uh she got ambushed on a planet um a bunch of predator ships are after her and there's like this so this picks up right there there's a ch- space chase she's being chased by these predators she finally you know her her they're damaging her ship she finally lands and you know she's a little tipsy because she was drunk drinking it was like it was a it was an ice planet so she's drinking all this whiskey to stay warm but then the predators attack so the computer her ai is like yo you're 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 lit you shouldn't be fighting or even flying because you're fucked up she's like i can't i gotta go i gotta go so she ends up you know putting on her predator armor and goes out all drunk <laughs> <laughs> and says come on and she ends up fighting the predator in a cool battle fight scene even though she's lit and drunk she she gets her lickings in um uh but the predator is right about to kill her then all of a sudden it gets shot like brrr, it gets just get mowed down by bullets you know and she's like what the hell and then a bunch of uh um humans in like with guns and shit and they're like they just killed the predator mm-hmm. and they find her hey you're human what the hell you know and so that's where wait she's continued. not on earth is she no she's on another planet Okay, but human human people looking people. Okay, yeah. Yeah, human people saved her, like shot the predator okay. that was about to kill her. Like she was about to lose the fight, you know, because she was drunk. And the predator was right about to, you know, do the killing blow on her, but then brrr, he gets all shot up. And mm-hmm. uh, it was a bunch of humans that shot the predator. And then they find her. They think they're they think it's two predators fighting, but they're like, hey, what the hell? You're a human. You know, in predator before they, before they decide to shoot her, right? Yeah, yeah, and they're like, "What the hell?" So that's where it says to be continued. So she's on another planet with these strangers who obviously can kill predators. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this was was pretty cool. This was a um, the last issue was a little bit lull, like a lull. She was exploring the planet, and it was like you know a lot of talking between her and her AI and shit. Um, this one was just all action and fighting. So this was cool. Four to five. They haven't lost me yet. Cool. Okay. All right. Uh, do you get any more books or? Oh, you're done. That's right. You're done. Yeah, I, that's all I can find. I, I... I'll, I'll do uh, Earth Divers number. Two. Earth Divers. Okay. Save the best for last. Continuing on with Indigenous Heritage. Month. Right. That's what I'm saying. T- technically, this is your due diligence for this month. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is another comic written by an Indigenous author, Stephen Graham Jones. I've actually read a number of his books. He's a he writes a lot of horror stories um and he has done he's actually did a story in the, the marvel voices um that came out a couple years ago who who uh who was in the story that he wrote um what's her name wolverine's old wife what the fuck's her name silver fox yeah her oh so he that gave one. her mutant powers like that that was a cool story yeah. i like the story yeah. yeah okay um so yeah uh 
so this is his uh, time travel sci-fi thriller. Uh, the Earth is all fucked up. It takes place like 100 years in the future. The Earth is a dead planet. The, the, there's very few human survivors, but there's a few Native Americans in the future that are still struggling to survive. They find a time portal in a cave. So they decide in order to save the planet, they're going to go back in time to 1492 to kill Christopher Columbus. Um, their reason being that the end of the world, the world started becoming a shithole because of the discovery of America. Like that was the pinpoint. That was where the world led to its downfall, the colonization of America. So they blame it all on Columbus. So they send one of their own back in time to go uh, kill Columbus. The first issue is this him getting, you know, trying to blend in. He's on board one of the ships. He, they, he, he stands out like a sore thumb. He's a linguistics uh, professor or whatever. He know he kn learned the language and all that stuff. He memorized Columbus's um, diaries and log books on the sail on, uh, you know, you know, him tracking the voyage and all that shit. Um, but he still stands out. He's trying not to blow his cover. They think that every, all the rest of the crew think he's a saboteur or a spy. Um, uh, and then meanwhile, back in, in the future, his friends are like wondering, like, did, did it, ha did it work? Nothing's changed. Is he dead? Is he alive? Maybe this going back in time to change history doesn't even work. So that's where the last issue uh, uh, left off. This time, we're, he's still on the boat. He's still, um, you know, trying to, uh, you know, not blow his cover. But st things start happening that he does, like, he's like, a storm starts happening. Like, they start, they start sailing into a storm. And Christopher Columbus is like, we better go. We're going to take, we're going to divert to these other islands, you know. So he's like, what, what the hell? This wasn't in the log books. This didn't like, he read all his diaries and, you know, his, you know, details on his journey. He had it all memorized. He's like, he never mentioned anything about taking this diversion, you know, to these Island, this detour. So he's wondering, and, and there was never any storms either. So he's like, did I fuck something up? Did I change history right now? You know, because he's been like, he actually killed a couple guys and all that. So he's wondering what the hell happened. And same thing back in the future. Um, they're still like, what's going on? What's happening? They, they're, they're researching the textbooks that they have, um, wondering if they got the history right, if the textbooks were, you know, correct. Um, and they end up finding, they're like wondering, hey, did it work? Did he change history? Um, all that questioning, and then the last panel, they see a zombie version of the guy of their friend who went back in time, and like, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 so uh, it was kind of a what the fuck moment. <laughs> like, <laughs> like maybe because yeah, maybe he's the, he is changing history somehow. Um, uh, still a pretty intriguing idea. Um, my only beef is the switching back and forth between the future and the past gets a little oh, jarring. Like, like arrow or some shit. Yeah. yeah, like like you know, it's like who's this now? And okay, okay, we're back in the past or we're back in the future, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, that that that's about it. But it's still a cool idea, and I'm like that ending is like, what the fuck? Like what the he's a zombie in the present, you know, like right. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully they'll explain it's not jumping the shark already. So yeah. Yeah. So um yeah, still pretty cool, still pretty uh, you know, intriguing idea. I like I like the the you know the scenario of oh yeah, the the, the colonization of America is what led to the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a bold statement, but I I I I find it intriguing. And yeah, so another four out of five. Cool, cool. And I'm booked out. All right. So uh yeah. Like I said, if you listen to this long, definitely like, share, subscribe. We got other podcasts. Uh, I, yeah, we got this geeks and comics, and I think that's it. There may be other ones. I don't the pre, know. The preview show. Yeah, Pre there's oh, uh, a yeah, preview show. Okay, Boomer or Big Willie or whatever. You I think do. they resurfaced oh, a couple weeks ago. 
Okay. Something new. I don't know what they did. I, just, I think I just got a notification they were still doing something. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, also, yeah, I want to say rest in peace to take off. I know we didn't do that at the oh, very beginning, but we want to talk about that now. Reason, I, Honestly, Eli, reason I saved it for the end, because anytime like a rapper dies from gun violence, I don't want to bring the whole mood down because I'm going to mess my whole mood up. So I just say it for the end, you know, because mm-hmm. yeah. uh, I have some thoughts on that, but I think it's the wrong podcast for me to bring that up. So, yeah. yeah. So we're going to go out with a, with a takeoff song, one of the Migos songs. So, yeah. Uh, until then, this is Leroy. This is Eli. We'll talk to you guys next week. Same bullet time, same bullet channel. We the best music. Another one. DJ Khaled. I like the wretchedest women. G6, let's get it. Rich niggas coming down to the city. On God. Yo, bitch, outside getting lit it. Show me the titties. Acting like a menace. Standing on the couch. Standing on business. Drinks in your mouth. Swallow, don't spit it. Party all the time. Feeling like Diddy. Shining a little wrist. Feeling like Billy. God did, God did. I'm a witness. I just sent 50 bottles to bitches. Know the gang getting the vip by the penis. Still in the meeting. Be back in a minute. The phone talking chicken. Hey. We the best, we too blessed, we keep winning. We the best. The party won't stop, it won't finish. Let's get it. Let's get it. Get it. We did it. Did it. I'm committed. committed. We all in it. In, it. in the city. city. We get lit. lit. Get out your feelings and go get some bandits. God did, God did. I'm a witness. Ooh. I just sent 50 bottles to bitches. Ooh. Know the gang getting the fit by the penis. Ooh. Still in the meeting, be back in a minute. I tell her at the bank, throw it back, it got an aftertaste. Paddy can't come in six figures of paddy face. Paddy. The school at hard knocking, I graduated. I can't fuck with that bitch, she be aggravated. If I can't get that bag, I'm agitated. Bad. She popping that ass, but she graduated. Bobby. On shoes at the party, it's animated. Oh, they keep telling me it's my time to Tony Hawk grind. Like, fuck it, I gotta take it. it. Angels watch over me, looking at demons and shit. Can't run, you gotta face, face it. it. When they give up on you, they don't need fuck with you. Fuck em. Take it back to the basics. Bitch. I'm a done daughter. Lace up my products. Popping my collar. Three seats mafia. Get it. We did it. Did it. I'm committed. committed. We all in it. In, it. in the city. city. We get litty. Lit. Get out your feelings and go get some bandits. God did, God did. I'm a witness. Ooh. I just sent 50 bottles to bitches. Ooh. Know the gang getting the fit by the penis. Ooh. Still in the meeting. Be back in a minute. Capiche, we in on tilapia. It's a mob party, mob party. Sound like a line when the engine started. Came from that band, now we sell out the garden. You said what? Beg your pardon. What? The trench coat, keep a carbon. Brrr. I pop out the coupe with a ratchet bitch. Ratchet. But I got a cut, I go barbers. Barbie. Ducati, Kawasaki, Harley. Sky. Designer garments for the goddess. Yes. I was summer, but fuck being modest. It's what you doing, you got it. Pop it. I lost my grandma, we lost Lil' Key. Had a nigga feeling like got it. Party out of time, put it on the line. If she not a dime, then she ain't mine. Get it? We did it, did it. I'm committed, committed. We all in it, in, it. in the city, city. We get litty. lit. Get out your feelings and go get some bandits. God did, God did. I'm a witness. Ooh. I just sent 50 bottles to bitches. Ooh. Know the gang getting the fit by the penis. Ooh. Still in the meeting, be back in a minute. Put that shit on, I ain't trying. Ballin' on NBA combine. Ball. Stepping on niggas, it's crunch time. Stepping. Eat up that pussy, it's lunch time. Eat it. Give me that pussy like Webby, give me that. She got that splat, that wetty, splat. We party all night and she never forget it. Take off, she get it. We did it, did it. I'm committed, committed. We all in it, in, it. in the city, city. We get litty, lit. Get out your feelings and go get some bandits. God did, God did. I'm a witness. Ooh. I just sent 50 bottles to bitches. Ooh. Know the gang getting the fit by the penis. Ooh. Still in the meeting, be back in a minute. Party. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it.